I do composite functions. This is second exam stuff, inverses. Right after your first exam, we'll start talking about composite functions. So let's use those two same functions for on the last video, f of x being 2x plus 1, g of x being x squared. Now we have this weird little notation, this little degree symbol that's in between the two. This means the composite of two functions. Um, I'm not going to go into great lengths. There are Khan Academy videos. You can watch these things all day long. I'm just kind of shortcutting you through. I prefer this manner of writing. Saying we're going to take our g of x. Let me change the colors on it. And we're going to plug it into our f. We'll plug it into our f. So that's that first step. I see that. Really, the only the stuff on the left hand side you see that in algebra textbooks and in trig textbooks, trying to th trying to throw you off your game. On the right, it says the same thing, but it tells a much better story. So I'm going to go down now. Let's replace. All we're going to do is replace what's inside the parentheses. So g of x isn't that equal to x squared? Let's replace. All right, now that we have that in there, let's rewrite f as two times something plus one. f of, so when it was f of x, we just wrote an x here, right? Now when it's f of x squared, what do you think you're going to write in there? x squared, dude. x squared. So our answer is 2x squared plus 1. Now just think about it. All you're doing is saying take g and go plug it in for freaking x and f. That's all it's saying. If you replace the x with x squared, what do you get? 2x squared plus 1. There it is. Now we're going to do the opposite process. We're not going to get the same answer out of this bad boy. Now it's different. We're now saying the g is on the outside. So g of f of x. This one's going to be a little bit different. So we'll follow those same patterns. We'll leave our g. You don't have to show all these steps. If you see how the game's working out, what's f of x? 2x plus 1. We'll replace it. Now we're just stating, hey, plug that thing into g. So g of blah. g of x was x squared. So g of blah is going to be blah squared. And that blah is 2x plus 1. So what we're going to find out is g of f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 all squared. And if you wanted to expand it out, you want to be all like just showing off and stuff, it's going to look a little something like this. Um, either answer would be fine. The point of this whole thing is actually just to get it plugged in and see what's going on. Dope. Let's get it. Let's go to our next. Let's go to number three, where we want to find f of g of 2. Let's bring these over just a little bit. I've been working for a while, so my handwriting is starting to get corrupted in here. So we have g of f, f of g of 2. Oh, we already found that out. We have found f of g of x from before. Which works for every value of x, not just 2. It worked for 3 and 7 and 100. It was saying all you'd have to do is just plug 2 in right there and get an answer of 9. But there's multiple ways of doing this. So let's rewrite this as f of g of 2. What was g of 2? Isn't that just 4? Sorry, 2 squared is 4. So now we could write it in as it's f of. 4. Now what's f of 4? It says plug 4 into your f. Okay. 2 times something plus 1. So we take our 4, we plug it on in, and we're like, well, what's that answer? That's 8 plus 1. That's that's 9. Huh. 9. Same thing you would have got if you would have just plugged a 2 into 2 times 2 squared plus 1. And for our final one, we got f of f of x. Let's go. So this is saying it's f of f of x. Follow the same pattern. Let's replace whatever's going on in the interior with what it equals. f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Now we're going to take 2 plus, 2x plus 1 and we're going to plug it in for that x value up there. Let's say it's 2 times something plus 1. That's f. Now we take our 2x plus 1 we add it on in there. We clean it up just a bit. I think we're going to get 8x plus uh, 2 plus 1 for a big old 8x plus 3. 
Oh, composite functions. Composite functions. No. There would be, there's the composite functions. We're gonna mess around with inverses in the next one. This next one will be a little bit longer uh, because these composites and the inverses have something to do with each other. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna do it now. I'm do it now. Screw it. Let's do it live. Say f of x is still equal to two x plus one. Wow, that looks great. Now I'm gonna say that g of x, that's equal to x minus one all over two. Now there's this concept of an inverse. An inverse is the opposite process. Now if things are inverses of each other, if f and g are inverses of each other, and say inverses, then f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. There's a big reason, because an inverse is just the opposite process, saying if you do one process and then you do the opposite, you're going to end up right back at your input, which is x. Which is x. So let's go show that f and g are inverses of each other. So we're going to take f of g of x. I'm just choosing this one just just because. Just freaking because. I don't know. And we'll say that this is f of g of x. of x. I'm going to put the equal sign on the other side. It's getting ugly. I want to work down. So what is g of x? What do we got there? x minus 1 over 2. And these always look like they're terrible, but they fall out so fast. They fall out so fast. So now we're like, okay, we're going to take that x minus 1 over 2. And we're just basically plugging it in for x. So let's rewrite that. So it's 2 times something plus 1. But watch how all this stuff is just going to fall out. Our x minus 1 over 2. Look at this. What's negative 1 plus 1? Boom! That shit equals x. Therefore, f and g are inverses. I don't need to check the other one. As long as I get one of them to get an x, I know it's an inverse. They're opposite processes of each other, which, oh my gosh, that's half the class. That's half a trigonometry after you figured out what a freaking right triangle is and how a squared plus b squared equals c squared and a little bit of Sokotoa. Then it starts having to do with opposite processes, inverses. Well, here is the beginning. Here is our start to the inverses. In our next video, we will solve for two values or two inverses, and then that's going to be it for our algebra review. See ya.